The only thing more exciting than a Washington Commander's Hail Mary is looking at your screen and seeing Mark Zinno and myself. What's going on in the morning wager here? Start a new week, talking World Series Game 3. Yankees are down 0-2, Zinno. And we're talking Monday Night Football, the Steelers and Giants, kind of a putrid game. But we got a player prop for you in our best bet. Mark, we're starting with the World Series, though. Your Yankees, they need to win very, very badly. And uh, you're going to take a look at the first five here. I mean, you're just you're going to gloss over everything that happened over the weekend. We're not even going to spend a minute ranting and raving oh. about the weekend. I mean, we'll you know, do that the, later. We're going to do that later. We're going to get into the pick and then, the and then we're going to work our way back. We're going to work our way back. We're going to go pick, give the people some information. Then we'll rant in the middle. Let's do that. Sure. That'll work. Um, <laughs> by the way, um, before I give out the pick, I'll just say that uh, I hope that Mike McDaniel got held down and his head shaved after the abhorrent coaching performance he did yesterday with the Miami Dolphins. We'll move on from that. Then we'll get to Saturday and then we'll back it up to Friday and how I hope Aaron Boone gets stuffed in a trash can and not allowed in the stadium tonight. Beyond that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yankees. Um, uh, yeah. They're playing game three tonight. Kind of a must win spot. eh? Yeah. Clark Schmidt was the guy who should have started game two because Aaron Boone sucks at his job and knows he shouldn't have started Carlos Rodon on the road. So Carlos Rodon should be starting this game and Clark Schmidt should have started game two. But we digress from that. Clark Schmidt, I told you guys repeatedly, is the most reliable and most consistent starter on this Yankee staff. He's the guy I trust the most. Furthermore, the Dodgers have like next to no track record against him. Like they just haven't seen him. They don't know who he is. They don't, you know, it's just one of those things where there are only three guys in this lineup who have ever had net bat against him. Enrique Hernandez, Teoscar Hernandez, and Shohei Otani. Uh, and Otani has one hit, and Enrique Hernandez has one hit. Oh, Shohei Otani actually hit a home run off of him, but that's either here nor there. So, uh, yeah, you give the edge to the pitcher in this spot when the guys haven't seen him and have, doesn't really know what his stuff looks like. So, that said, the Yankees don't have a ton of experience against Walker Bueller either. However, Walker Bueller is a dumpster fire. He is a gas can. He is a live abortion on the mound as a pitcher. He's terrible. So, and given the nature of what the Yankees have here being down 0-2, if they don't get to Walker Bueller, guess what? They're dead. They're dead. The game is over. You might as well shut it off after five innings. So I am going to take the Yankees' first five money line, despite the fact that it's juiced to 145, because after what happened to me in game one with my Yankees plus a half, thank you, Juan Soto, for not knowing how to play right field. Um, after losing that one, I may as well just take the money line here and keep the tie in my back pocket. Uh, and yes, it's juiced to minus 145, but don't get upset at that because – if you follow around way to talk, there 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 are wackadoodles handing out minus two eighteens everywhere. So you know why not? Yankees <laughs> minus one forty five first five money line. My half of the double play. Ah, uh, Mark Zeno firing shots. Here. Have you ever just laid no, minus two eighteen on the money line? Have I'm, you ever? I'll laid tell you what I've. I'll tell you what I've laid a lot of things that I don't want to talk about right now. Okay, let's move. Oh, there we go. Oh. There we, go. Lots, we have a, We have a visitor Is here on the morning. Was it even? Okay, let's 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 move on. All right. No, okay. I'm gonna, I'm, I mean, you know, listen. If I'm going to commit an assault, I'm going to let you know who it's on. I mean, it wasn't him. No. It just you know. okay. Well, let me tell you something. I'm going to let me tell you something. I had a lot of closing line value over the weekend. And you know what got you know what that oh, got me? Not even a pat on the ass. All right. I'm going to talk talk about that in a few minutes. Let me talk about the total in World Series Game Three first. Okay. You mentioned your buddy Aaron Boone uh, making a, a mistake. If you ever call him my buddy error. again. If you ever call my buddy again, I will, sl I will drive to Ohio and slit your throat. My God. My okay. neck. Uh, anyway, I, I, on that note, uh, Mark Zeno's sworn enemy, Aaron Boone, uh, made a strategic error, perhaps, in starting Rodon again instead of Clark Schmidt in game two. To that point, guys, check this out. Clark Schmidt's numbers on at home versus the road. Mark, I'm assuming you're aware of this. Uh, it's, a, it's a big jump. Clark Schmidt on the road this year, has a 1.39 ERA. That number jumps to 4.50 at Yankee Stadium. So, yeah, Schmidt Price should have started game two. So I think the, the Dodgers, who, generally speaking, in this postseason, have just put up a ton of runs. I mean, every game in the NLCS went over. Game one infamously goes over uh, with the grand slam. But, I mean, you look at the Dodgers. They've scored the last uh, eight games. They've scored 9-3, 8-10, 6-10, 6-4. They're probably going to score some runs, even with a banged-up Otani. But I do agree with everything you obviously said uh, concerning Walker Bueller. 
The Yankees need to get to him early. Bueller, uh, much, much worse on the road than at home, okay? His splits, I mean, 6.53 ERA on the road versus 4.60 at home. So both these guys are pitching in terms of home road where they don't want to be. And then you look at the Yankees and Dodgers, WRC plus against righties, they're one and two. Yankees won, Dodgers two. And since the Dodgers got Max Muncy back in mid-August, they're actually number one. So I think both these offenses are going to put some runs on the board. I agree with Mark's Yankees' first five uh, money line play, but I also like over eight and a half in game two, or pardon me, game three of the World Series. Yes. Your thoughts? Uh, I don't need the stress of watching this game tonight. I really Look, and you know what? Part of me was really happy that um, they went down 0-2 because that way I didn't have to drop about eight grand taking my kids to game three because I had seriously contemplated it. I had seriously like contemplated like, it. If it was 1-1. Like, there was a part of me that would have been, you know, in Yankee Stadium tonight with my children. Pulled them out of school, flown to New York, going to watch the game, giving them the experience of a lifetime, something I didn't have till I was in my 20s. Uh, would have loved to have done that. But uh, I can't put my kids uh, in a situation where they have to watch Aaron Boone manage a baseball game live because it, it might scar them for the rest of their life. And I, I as a parent, I can't do that to them. Uh, Mark Zeno giving you parenting tips and also to his point under the World Series current format of 232 the team that if a team wins the opening two games the last 50 of uh, the last 56 times that's happened the team up 2-0 yeah. has won the series 45 Power. times the last you know two the last, t- the la- right, um, I think it was the Yankees were the last team to do it were they not what yeah, year was 96. that I'm sure you 96. know 96. 96. They, they lost the first two at home to wow. Dodgers, and then, I mean, to the Braves, and then won four straight. Oh, Gar- the, the Guardians, then known as the Indians, States. were in the World Series in 95 and 97. The only other team besides the Yankees uh, to in 96 to overturn that 0-2 deficit, the team before that was the 86 Mets. So it doesn't happen very often. They needed Bill Buckner to have the ball go through his legs. All right, that's the World Series for you. Two bets for you. Smash that like button if you agree with first five Yankees or the over eight and a half. Or if you agree with both, if you don't agree with either of them, comment down below with your favorite bets on World Series Game 3. We would love to see what you are doing as well. Would you like to rant about the weekend now, kind sir? Because I have a rant coming. I know, but uh, it seems like you've Um, gotten some... Yeah. Uh, Look, uh, you know, my 4% play on the Dolphins yesterday. And look, listen, I'll be honest, but you know me. I mean, what do I do other than be honest on this show? Um, For whatever reason... People would rather buy a can of herpes than my NFL plays. So, um, I, you know, that, like, yeah, that, that's my pretty God. much. What Come on. <laughs> People would rather have that than my NFL plays. The only thing that prevented a 4 0 NFL week for me was Mike McDaniel being an absolute putz yesterday in that game. They had a nine point lead in the fourth quarter. They had a chance to go down, ice the game, kick a field goal, cover the number. And he sucked. He absolutely sucked. And the Dolphins sucked. And it was awful to watch. That pissed me off. Not as much pissed me off on Saturday. On Saturday, when Braden Locke destroyed my five point, my five percent play with Wisconsin, throwing a stupid pick out of the back of his end zone that changed the entire game that Wisconsin would have covered. And by the way, if your name is Braden and you spell it B R A, oh no, here we go. Okay, bra. Okay, if bra is the first three letters of your name. Okay, it's not a good name. Braden Locke. What? A, what a mo- like? What an awful throw! Like everything was trending perfectly. They had shut down Penn State's offense. They were doing everything they needed to do, and the jack wagon decides from the, his own end zone to throw a ball to the middle of the field to who I don't know. No clue who he was throwing it to. None whatsoever. Pick six. Changed the entire tide of the game, and Wisconsin was done. Absolutely done. The only saving grace is that I got my Tuesday $5 play right in Minnesota, which was a no-sweat winner. Um, K-State, yeah, you stink too. No (laughs) points in the first quarter. Oh, over 33 and a half. Let's end on 29 because we decide not to start scoring until the second quarter of the game. I wish you would have lied. Oh, my God. Anyway, so you did have something. So you did have something to rant about. It turns out, I guess, when I asked you, I had kind of just gotten over it, and, and, and then you brought it all back up. So, well, yeah, can't, can't well, hurt. Okay, well, look. All right, I come on here usually, 
I try to be positive. I smile. I'm on time. I try to be as well, professional as I can. Okay. I've had a good football season for the most part until this past weekend where uh, I made mistakes, guys. I was chase- I was trying to beat the line rather than I was obsessed with it, and I paid the price. Okay? Bet Washington plus six and a half. They close at plus five. Indiana wasn't going to lose with college game day. What was I thinking? Uh, bet the under in Notre Dame Navy. Okay? That closed at 50. I had a couple points of value there. Guess what? There's 800 points scored in every Navy game. That was a loser. Uh, ah. UC, UCF. I bet you. All right. We all know BYU is not a top 10 team. They're top 25, but they're not a top 10 team. You know who's not a top 10 team, a top 25 team, or a top 40 team? UCF. Okay. I've seen teams from 1926 that are better with the forward pass than the Golden Knights. We moved to Sunday. The Browns. I bet them plus nine. They close at plus seven. Okay, that was a good bet. But uh, my 5%, uh, just cruel and unusual punishment at the end of that game that I was given life with the Chargers Saints over, and then it still doesn't hit. Uh, I'm very sorry about that, guys. It was a bad weekend. We're going to get dust ourselves off, get back on track, but I wanted to acknowledge that I had five closing line value trophies that I just went through and one winner, and that's that. that's not acceptable. I'm very upset about it. Uh, Mark Zinno was doing national radio yesterday and was kind enough to call me during a commercial break to let me rant. That was very nice of you, Mark. Thank you for being a well, friend. Well, I, I am a team player, um, and this is um, this is this is a program that is uh, is united by our bonds as as men, as friends, and um, degenerates. So uh, I'm glad that we could we could be there for one another and the morning wager audience. Look, and, and I'll tell you what. Uh, uh, to all those who who purchased the uh, the the five percent play from the weekend, man, I just uh, it's one of those where I really threw until that interception, until that pick six, like the handicap it was, was looking spot. good. Oh, Jesus it was Christ. looking like it was that was the interception right there. That right there was the interception that Braden locked through. Okay, uh, and you can't buy that in any store. You you can't find that online. <laughs> no, they, they don't sell it in real life. Okay, that's so wrong. That's exactly what that was. So, that's you know, so I apologize to everybody. It, 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 I had my own hard-earned money on it as well. I, I you know, I, I hate, I hate it when when that stuff goes wrong. I really do. I genuinely do. I do too. Uh, I do too. It's part of this business. We were running real hot in college. Still, overall, you know, uh, an, an eleven and four run over the past five weeks is still pretty Ooh. damn good, but. That, you know, it just, you know, it's a big kick in the you-know-whats. Uh, especially after they Minnesota was such an easy win. I really felt good going yeah. into that, that Wisconsin-Penn State game. Um, but just, ugh, just a, what, a, what, a, what a kick in the balls. It sucks. All right. We're done it's ranting. Not, it's not, it's not Mark, as bad as playing 218 on the money line, you know. By all right. Well, you, all right. We, uh, let me tell you. We don't count winning okay, percentage. All right. All right. We're, we're done with all this. We're done with all this. We're done with all this. We're going to move to the Monday Night Football. So You, you talked about how... This show's all about us uniting the bond. We agree on a player prop. You and I we always agree do well. We agree with our player prop. Well, That's I think we everybody agree. agrees that the Giants suck. But we, agree. Uh, we like George Pickens, who had a big game with Russell Wilson as quarterback. He could be a beneficiary of Wilson being under center for the black and gold. And we like George Pickens to go over his receiving yards of 60 and a half tonight. Yeah, I mean, look, um, before I get to picks, I'll say there's a couple other props that we looked at for tonight, which I, I think are interesting, but there's some sort of things that are hanging out there that that get me off of it. Like Daniel Jones' rushing yards prop is only around, um, I think it was around 20 or 30 somewhere. It's rushing yards. Yeah, it's only that 25, which is a low number for a running quarterback like Daniel Jones. However, the Steelers, you know, nobody gets a lot of rushing yards from them because they get the quarterback on the ground, right? Like, so mm-hmm. there's the danger there. Like Najee Harris only has 62 yards after having a major outburst last week on the ground. Um, and the Giants aren't necessarily great against the run. Um, but that number feels kind of low. So I'm a little bit like skittish about it. You know, the Giants have a bottom five run defense um, in the league this year, giving up 140 some yards a game. So that's one that's out there as well that I think is viable. Even the Giants give up a lot of rushing yards to quarterbacks. Even Russell Wilson's rushing yards prop is only at like 15 ish. So I, I think there are a bunch of different angles you can go. We settled on George Pickens. Why? For two main reasons. One, what we saw last week from him uh, as Russell Wilson took over. Nine targets, five catches, 111 yards, and a touchdown. And that was against a Jets defense that's actually good with a good secondary. This is not a Giants good secondary at all. So, uh, And part of the reason why the Giants 
pass defense numbers look the way they are is because when teams get leads against the Giants, all they do is start pounding the rock because they know that they can't stop it. So some of those numbers are a little bit skewed. That and Arthur Smith has been dying to open up this playbook a little bit and couldn't do it with Justin Fields at quarterback. So now he has um, Russell Wilson back in there, a a better passer. Uh, I think we can all agree that neither one of these guys are great, but Russell Wilson is clearly a better thrower of the football than Justin Fields is. So I think when you look at the receptions, I think at four and a half, it's viable. But I like the yards here just because Pickens is typically a bigger play receiver um, than, than, you know, from a yardage standpoint than anything else. And he might get all of this, to be honest with you, or a big chunk of it on one reception. So let's go over. uh, Let's go over George Pickens receiving yards for the game here for our best bet. Yeah, and Wilson last week, you mentioned the better thrower of the football compared to Fields. He was completing a lot of big passes. So, uh, obviously, Pickens, the, the season high in targets. So, that is your best bet. George Pickens over 60 and a half receiving yards. Throw us a like if you agree with us. Let us hey, know. If you're mad, Side, go. total, prop, what you're betting on Monday Night Football. We love to see that as well down in the comments section below. And Let's keep it interactive. Wish, and make sure you're subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel. Sharon wish Aaron Boone fired. Just put that in the comment section as well, too. That's what I want. Well, I think everyone thinks he should be fired at this point. No. I'm just time burners, no. Because they gave him a three-year extension. Well, okay, that's certainly a different opinion. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Let's catch some tickets.